<laughs> hey Chanel. Hey Chris. How's it going? It's going. How Good. are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. I really appreciate you doing this. I am very excited to be here with you. I wanted you to tell me what was it like when you got that first novel of a text from me when I yeah. was on a flight from Detroit to Chicago and just kind of word vomited my idea mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. I wanted you to contribute. Okay, here Chris is again with a super crazy idea right. and right. now he wants me to be a part of it, right? I'm happy to have an insane friend. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my thought was. That can do insane things to yes. me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like what you were saying, like, this is a crazy idea. This is scary. This yeah. makes me feel nervous. I feel excitement. This must mean it's a good thing, right? There we go. Yeah. And I took that and I'm like, let's just run with it, right? Yeah. When you hear the phrase, stop apologizing for being human, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that pops in your head? How does that resonate with you as a person, as an artist, as a person of color, as a woman? Mm. I was thinking about moments where if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling angry, like I can mm -hmm. do that. Like, and I, I don't have to explain to people why I'm happy about something. I just want to be cheerful even when everybody else is not cheerful about something. But that's just what it is. And so if you tie it into that being a black woman mm -hmm. um, and me being in a, in a white institution, for example, like I've had moments of just having to retreat into the safe spaces that I've created for myself in environments that are not always safe. I really resonate with what you said because uh, it's been my experience and I've explained to people, they're like, oh, you're just so, you're so calm and chill mm. and, and you know, always present yourself. It's like, well, yeah. you know, I'm a large black man. The price for like showing my full range yeah. of emotions uh, can be death, Yeah. you know? And so it's, it's very real and I think it's important that we create spaces as mm -hmm. artists for us to be allowed to be human, yeah. for us to allow to just express what we need to express yeah. and find safety in that. And so my work, I create these spiritual objects that are wreaths and I incorporate a lot of objects that um, I would normally find in my home. Experimenting with floral foam, um, glass beads, which I definitely have to credit Joyce Scott, Aletha Devane, um, I would say Kanish Magwood, like when it comes to like my symbolism and my wreaths. So I'm using them as portals to go back to those memories that I that are often fragmented, but also uh, memories that I don't want to end. And, and the happiness or excitement that I may be feeling in those those moments, you know, of, of being human and not apologizing for how excited I was on um, the day I went on a date or the day that I took my family to get ice cream, right? Or the moments where I may have been traumatized from something and I'm trying to recover from that and revisit it in a way that doesn't re-traumatize me, um, you know, spiritually, emotionally, or physically. And a lot of that is done in the beadwork, in, in the, the act of making, in the act of moving my hands. And a lot of it is, is really a ritual for me. How can I place the memories that I'm feeling into these wreaths and never forget them? Because once they're tangible, they're, they're not going anywhere. And right? it's so interesting because I feel like that's so much of like the compositional process. Mm -hmm. And to me that parallel is really, you know, as, as a musician who plays improvised music, yeah. we have a lot of structure that we create, we have a lot of plan, but there's a lot that happens in the moment. And to me, mm -hmm. it's part of the beauty of what the audience experiences. And so with this, it could just be, hey, I want you to create a piece and yeah. I want it just stationary on stage. It's like, no, I kind of <laughs> want you creating as we're creating and unveiling the music and everybody gets to watch the process. Yeah. When I think about the spirit or when I think about uh, connecting with ancestors, I feel like the closest you come to God is when you're creating, right? When you're making art, right. uh, whether, you know, no matter what it looks like or yeah. when you're we're creating through music, like it's all God, like, right? Yeah, it, yeah. That's the closest you're gonna get to the spirit. And that's why a lot of times when we're making work, we're like, I couldn't even explain how I did that. Like, right. <laughs> when you like actually walk away from it, mm -hmm. right? And I had a professor recently tell me, um, there's like this connection of like, you, you can't be a viewer and an artist at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So like in the moment, you're the artist, right? You're just creating this crazy, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then when you go back and view it, you're like, hmm. I know I can do that. We use the word channeling, but we don't, I don't think sometimes we're not conscious yeah. of what we're saying. It really is channeling through us, right? Absolutely. We really are just allowing this to pass through us. And uh, I'm honored to be a medium for, you know, for this music being created. And mm -hmm. I think it's about being open enough to allow it to express through us. I just want it to be felt, right? right? I want people to, to see it and, and say, like, I feel that, that spirit radiating from that piece. Absolutely. And I want them to, to take a bit of that and 
reflect and see a little bit of them mm -hmm. inside that spirit, even if they're, you know, at the beginnings of, the, of their healing journey or, you know, still in that phase of apologizing for being their human self. As I'm going through this, to me, each performer mm -hmm. kind of embodies the piece. It's not yeah. about me, even though I wrote the story, even though I wrote the music. Mm -hmm. Each one of us has this, you know, in our being. Yeah. And for me, a large thing that I'm working on in my own personal work and in my own therapy work, work right now is this idea of uh, breaking codependent bonds mm. and this idea uh. of um, allowing mm -hmm. people to be self-sufficient because it's not my job to yeah. protect people. Yeah, and yeah. also this idea of I wanted to find safety mm -hmm. in my life. And so many of the habits that I formed were to become someone else's safe space. Mm. When we're overperforming or we're being hyper vigilant for someone, mm. uh, something I read recently was saying that we're not actually doing it for that person. We think we are. Mm. We think we're helping that person. They yeah. may benefit. It's sometimes a selfish, and if we're being really dramatic, mm. it's sometimes actually a manipulative act. Mm. Because in a sense, we're trying to earn love. And mm. what I'm learning oh God, yeah. is that we can't earn love. We mm. deserve love unconditionally. And mm -hmm. it's not something that we need to earn. And mm -hmm. it's not something that we need to extract from someone. Part of the beauty of who I am and mm -hmm. what I love about myself is the work that I put in to heal. Mm, yes. My journey, my healing journey is a part of who I am and that's integrated. Mm -hmm. And if we're not allowing someone to do that because we're kind of micromanaging mm -hmm. their, their journey, then they're not doing the work. Yeah. If someone had a piece of art and they said, well, I really want beads on this, but they didn't take the time to do it themselves. And yes. they had, had you do it, then <laughs> it's, not it's, not, really it's not their own. And it's no. the same thing. I can't have anybody else orchestrate my music no. for me. I need to do it. So to me, the process of this music coming to life on stage mm -hmm. and seeing you put in the work and seeing the detailed work, seeing mm -hmm. the processes that are slow, <laughs> that are fast, that are tedious, um, is really an example of the personal work that we do. So yes. It's a girl as humans. And just give back to people, there you know, go. give the same spiritual energy that we've now recouped for ourselves or filled our cup back up to now be able to pour into others. Yeah. I think that's why it's so special for for me to even be a part of this project. I, I just know how, how amazing you are and just how amazing your work is just with community, just with yourself and, and just hearing a lot about that spiritual journey, you know, and everybody's journey is different. You know, right. it's no one size fits all. So like what worked for you was not, would not work for me and vice right. versa, you know. Understanding that uh, the trauma that we're healing from is mm. not only our own trauma. There's, yeah. there's generational trauma. <laughs> and I want to I want to call out to our ancestors and honor our mm. ancestors on this, yeah. on this stage and have a moment and really think about we have this responsibility, mm -hmm. this opportunity to end generational trauma and to heal the wounds yeah. of the past, to heal our own wounds and to protect and look out for, mm -hmm. you know, our future generations. So let's yeah. make some beautiful art on stage and let's do it. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this. Thank you, Chris. Can I give you a hug? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>